Okay, it has finally happened. And let me just tell you, it has taken a long time to get to this. And listen, I hovered around a 15 to a 12 handicap for a long time, making all the excuses that you would probably expect to hear. Everything from starting the game too late in life to not having enough time to practice. And while getting to an eight handicap may not seem that significant to some people, to me it's made a world of difference. I shot multiple rounds in the 70s last season and I'm just finding myself enjoying the game that much more. Now, of course, I'm certainly no pro, I'm not a golf coach, I don't claim to be, but there's certain things that I've learned and some of these things that I wanna go over here are very universally applicable, both thoughts and strategies as well as some simple drills that I've been using for basic fundamentals that have really helped me along. And my hope is that by sharing those here, potentially you guys are able to take something away from that that might help your own game. So actually very recently, I had this mini revelation where I realized that I had been thinking about the way that I approached each full swing shot kind of backwards. This may sound subtle, but what I realized was for each full swing shot I would take, I was very focused on my distance while trusting my accuracy. So I thought, what if I was to reverse those two things? So what this meant was that for every full swing I would take now, I would focus primarily on my accuracy while trusting my distance. Now, interestingly, the more I focus on accuracy as my priority rather than distance, the more I'd find that I would actually get my distance correct. So I wasn't really lacking anything. And I think a lot of that came from better ball striking with the focus on accuracy, but more so I wanted to understand better why I was thinking the other way in the first place. And so thinking about this, I thought this is actually probably pretty common. You think about it, we don't ask each other, hey, how accurate do you hit your eight iron? We ask, how far do you hit your eight iron? Or when we talk about it, we say, how far we hit our clubs. We don't say how accurately we hit our clubs. And I think part of that just comes from the fact that, hey, it's just fun to hit the ball a long way. And for most of us who get started with the game, even later in life, what we find is that we wanna make sure we hit it the distance that we expect. So we put a lot of focus on making sure we're hitting it far enough and accuracy often becomes secondary to that. And I think ultimately what the issue with this is, is that as I was so focused on distance with my full swing shots, I would end up taking all of those swings at 100% speed. And if you have any issues in your swing, you know that they are going to become uncovered the harder you swing. So by naturally, instead of trying to reduce my swing speed or think about complex thoughts like swinging at 80%, I would simply think swing hard enough in order for this shot to be accurate and worry less about the distance it's going to travel. So as I focused more and more on accuracy and less on distance, what I found was that my ball striking was becoming more consistent and thus I was actually not really losing that much distance. But where it mattered even more was in the way that I approached the golf course. You see, what I found was coming up a little bit short of my target, but still being online, really resulted in losing less strokes versus getting the, the distance carried to target, but having a wider left and right dispersion. That would end up in most cases bringing in a lot more hazards, bunkers, and other things that just end up costing you strokes. Now, of course, I know that there's, uh, there's obviously an exception to every rule, and if there's certain instances where you need to cover something like water or some other hazard, in that case, of course, you have to make sure you've got the appropriate distance. But in those cases, I would just end up grabbing one more club. So listen, what does it hurt? Experiment, go out there and try that one. See what happens when you just kind of shift your thinking to worrying first about accuracy, the club you pull, the shot you select to play, the target you select. Make that your primary focus first and worry about distance second. Just see what happens. I think what you end up finding is that you end up saving yourself 
a couple of strokes in each round. Apparently they're using some sort of circular saw next door, so I apologize in advance about any background noise, but let's kind of move on to the second thing that's really helped me, and it kind of relates to that first, but this is a very particular drill that really helps me in pressure situations. So this next one actually comes from an incredible lesson that I got earlier this summer with Lewis Kelly. I'll link to that video so you guys can check out the whole thing. But what we were really working on was tempo. And I think this will relate to really any golf swing. Like I said, because tempo, no matter how you swing the club, tempo is something that we all need to make sure that we master as best as we can if we want that coveted consistency. So what I like about this drill is a couple things. One, it helps me kind of as a reminder for my tempo on the golf course. But two, it really does help me make sure that I'm moving my body and not swinging with my arms. And basically, the drill is very simple. What it really comes down to is just taking a couple of swings, one arm only. And you can do this with either arm. Just try it, experiment with either arm. In fact, it doesn't hurt to take some reps with each arm, but find which one you're more comfortable with. For me, it's my lead arm. And the thing with this is if you end up and where I end up rushing, again, going back to that thought of just trying to hit it hard or full swing or whatever it may be, if I end up rushing, then I know that I get very disconnected and it looks something like this, where the arms and the body start to get disconnected. And likewise, if you try to swing too much with your arms, you'll feel it. You'll feel it in an instance and because you have no second arm to kind of save you. So what I'll do is I'll take a couple of swings and I'll do this right on the golf course, especially in those pressure situations. If I get up to a par three where I'm worried about hitting the right number or whatever it may be, or if it's a pressure situation uh, in a match, I'll know that those are the moments when I start to rush my transition, try to hit it hard and everything goes out the window. So I'll end up taking a few swings and what you'll find is that the control that you do and where you feel the most controlled, that's your tempo. And then drill that in your mind. And what you'll, you'll feel like is you maybe feel like you're swinging a lot slower than when you have two hands on the club. But in reality, still generating some pretty good club head speed. So after a couple of those, I'll step up to the ball and just try to remember not only that tempo, but that connectedness. And what I find is that it really helps me groove a smooth swing. Did it like that all day and I'll be pretty happy. So this next one, it's kind of a couple of tips wrapped up into one. So recently I had the incredibly fortunate experience to play with James Nicholas. Now James, he's an incredible golfer. He plays on the DP World Tour. And while we're out there playing, I just wanted to pick his brain. And this is kind of part of that tip. The first tip is any chance, any opportunity you get, they don't have to be a pro tour player, but any opportunity you get to play with golfers who are better than you, take that, take that experience because you just never know what you might pick up from watching and from speaking to them. So anyway, figured I'd try to steal a quick free lesson out of James. So I, I go over to him and I ask, I said, James, you know, we've been playing a few holes now. What are you seeing? Is there anything, any tips you can give me? And I'm full well expecting James to give me some advice as it relates to my swing. So what James said next kind of surprised me a bit. He said, what you need to do is focus more on ball striking. As I'm watching you, you're kind of hitting the ball all over the face and that's what's causing this dispersion and you're having to hit a lot of different recovery shots. And if you think about it, what James said actually makes a whole lot of sense. You know, how many of us can honestly say that we work consistently on our ball striking? Of course, a lot of us, like I said, we work on our swing, we try to make different changes in our swing. And then some of us, myself included, are guilty of as soon as you hit a few good shots, then you try to do the next thing. You start to think, how can I shape the ball? How can I hit a draw? How can I hit a fade? And I think experimenting with all of that is definitely good and it all comes in due time. But if you're in that mid handicap level and you're just looking to get into shooting consistent scores in those low 80s, high 70s, I think, and what I've found from my personal experience, 
is it stands to benefit you a whole lot more to just be able to have more consistent, reliable strikes. No matter what your ball shape is. If you play a draw, play a draw. If you play a fade, play a fade, but just focus on hitting the center of that club face. One tool that I've used extensively and it's really helped me here is the Rapsodo MLM2 Pro. But one thing I'll say is even if you don't have that, if you don't have access to that type of equipment, there are still definitely ways you can do this. So don't let that set you back. I'm gonna talk more about that in just a second. But within the MLM2 Pro, you have the impact vision. So for every shot I take, as you just saw, I was out on the range, all of those are stored and I can replay them in super slow motion and look at my ball striking. And what I'm looking for is where that ball is striking on the face. I'm also looking to see if the face is twisting because that's a definite indicator that, for example, if you hit it out on the heel, it's gonna twist close or vice versa out on the toe. So I'll look at that extensively. But like I said, the good news is even if you don't have a wrap Soto, you can just spray the face with a powder and kind of accomplish a very similar thing. And here's why that information that you get from the wrap Soto or from spraying the face matters so much. You know, I, I had the another unique and very fortunate opportunity to work with a top 100 coach, Kevin Sprecher. And one thing that Kevin has told me countless times that really rang true to me is he said, you have to trust your body and trust yourself as an athlete. He said, sometimes it's not about trying to put yourself in certain positions, but rather it's about understanding what you're currently doing, what you want to do, and then allowing your body to make the appropriate changes. Allow yourself naturally to be an athlete. So in that full lesson with Kevin, which I'll link to if you wanna check out the full video, what we were finding was as we looked at that impact camera as I was striking the ball on the heel. And as kind of an interesting method of coaching, Kevin didn't give me any specific instruction. Instead, he just showed me what the problem was and allowed that to sink in and said, now allow your body to react to that as an athlete and make the necessary changes subconsciously in a lot of ways to hit the center of the face. And wouldn't you know, I started to hit the center of the face more on the next couple of strikes. Now, of course, there's a time and a place for more specific instruction, setup, swing, and otherwise, of course. And I don't wanna take anything away from that, but I do think combining with what I learned from James of just how much progress you can really make at home, just working on making consistent center face contact, you will dramatically see an improvement in not only your distance, but your accuracy out there on the golf course. So whether you use the Rapsodo MLM2 Pro and its impact camera like I do, or if you just simply spray the face, that low tech method, either way, I can guarantee you, if you put the reps in and you focus on that center face, flush, solid contact, just like James told me, just like Tiger once talked about, you are going to find that your scores are definitely going to improve. Now listen, everything we talked about here has dramatically helped my game and it really all boils down to sound fundamentals. Whether it's those drills we talked about that help with tempo or ball striking or just that slight shift in thinking about accuracy versus distance, all of them have really helped me get down into those single digits. But I still have a long way to go and the grind continues. One area where I continue to struggle is in greenside bunkers. I did recently get an incredible lesson, which I'll link to right here, so go check that out. That is one thing for sure I'll be working on in the coming months.